Hello and welcome aboard BDE Travels. In today's episode, we will leave the town of Puente de la Reina. We will cross Mañero, Sirauqui, Lorca, Villa Tuerta, and we will join the medieval festivities in the town of Estela. Thanks for joining us and welcome aboard. Oh, day five of recording. I'm leaving from Puente de la Reina to Estela. She's staying behind because she's injured. Yeah. She's taking a taxi, so I'm all by myself. Everybody else is injured. Here we go. Well, here we go. I think it's about uh, about 14 miles uh, to Estela. It's, uh, right now it's about 7.45. See some of the pilgrims at 3 a.m. in the morning. I heard a group of American ladies, uh, very loud. I don't know why we Americans are so loud, but uh, it was definitely Americans. And they started at four o'clock, so they got about a three and a half hour advantage over me. We say goodbye to the town of Puente de la Reina, not before we cross over its beautiful romantic bridge. The bridge was constructed in the 11th century to facilitate the passage of pilgrims in their way to Santiago de Compostela. The bridge is one of the more beautiful examples of the romantic architecture in the Jacobean route. Puente de la Reina was constructed by and for the Camino de Santiago, and as we look at the views from the air, we are inspired by the beauty of Puente de la Reina. Furthermore, in Puente de la Reina, there are two paths that join, the one coming from Roncesvalles and San Jean Pied de Port, and the other one coming from Sandport. Puente de la Reina, Mañero, Siraki, Lorca, Villa Tuerta, Estela. Oof. And that's how I look in the morning. The Camino Santiago is not a yellow brick road, but a yellow arrow road. During today's walk, my shadow is my biggest companion. Well, I just uh, went through a climb right after Puente La Reina and I come across a whole bunch of crosses. People just grab sticks and make crosses. It's right next to the highway off of Puente La Reina. After a long hike, we're just coming up on the uh, next town. You see the cathedral uh, from the distance, the highway and uh, the Camino. Let's see what we have on this town. As we cross the town of Mañero, we come across the familiar pictures of the family shields at the doorpost. Furthermore, we contemplate at distance the church situated in the middle of the town. And the now very common sign of the Camino, the shell in the blue background and the yellow arrows pointing the way. Mañero belongs to the municipality of Navarra, situated four kilometers from Puente de la Reina. During the 13th century, it belonged to the military order of San Juan Hospital of Jerusalem. There is a cafeteria upon entering Mañero early in the morning, and as we walk the streets, we observe several things that catch our attention. Again, the shields at the doorpost, and the streets are properly marked with the common blue and yellow arrows and the shell from the Camino de Santiago. We just left the uh, town of Mañero. It was very clean. Uh, all the buildings were uh, well maintained unlike some of the other towns you're gonna to go through. I kinda of like that town. There was nobody outside once again. In Spain, right now it's Sunday, and Sunday it's, uh, it's sacrilegious to do anything in Spain, so you won't be able to find anything, so make sure you pack up good water and everything in there. Center and top of a small hill, the town of Sirauqui is one of the most beautiful sights you will see in the Camino de Santiago. This village with its medieval layout emerges in a hillock in the middle of the Jacobean Pilgrim's Way between Puente la Reina and Estella. Large ashlar stone houses with a coat of arms featuring the inscription of the owner's name and the date of construction align both sides of the cobbled radial and concentric streets. The town spreads out around the Church of San Roman a Gothic building with an ogival door and multi lop arches with which, despite its numerous transformations, still has an appearance of a fortress. If you're following the pilgrim's route to Santiago, you'll leave Sirauqui along the Roman road, of which some sidewalks and paving stones remain as well as the Roman bridge whose upper part was transformed in 1702. Disculpe, ¿qué cosas son estas? 
Sí. Lo que no le pone era una vez, ¿cierto? Garbanzos. Garbanzos, ok. Lo están secando al aire. Natural, Natural gracias. This is the town of Tiraoki. And uh, we just found uh, people drying garbanzo right in the middle of the street. I didn't know they put it out outside to dry. But uh, from far away, after we get out of uh, Mañero, you come to Sirauki. And the views of the city from uh, out there, they're just simply beautiful. Uh, I just turned here and I'm looking for signs to how to uh, continue. Uh, it's like a labyrinth in here, uh, but it's very good. Sirauki is a very peculiar town in that it is the only town where the Camino de Santiago actually crosses through one of the buildings. As you make your way through the building, there is a stamp that you can place on your credential on the left side in one of the walls. Outside of the city of Sirauki, we find a uh, old Roman road and it's still intact up to these days. So uh, back when the day when the Romans uh, wanted to conquer the world, they actually mm -hmm. came through Spain all the way to the end and uh, to Finisterre. And that's one of the uh, final destinations of some of the pilgrims. They go to what it was called the end of the world back in the Roman times. And it's uh, the westernmost uh, point of Spain. Once again, it's called Finisterre. I, I did enjoy Sauriki a, a lot. Uh, once again, a very Pinterest uh, city. A couple of bars open, uh, even on Sundays, as we met our friend Ramon. And Ramon uh, is from Spain and he's making the comment that the Camino has become so commercialized that people don't close uh, anymore on Sundays because the, the economy depends on the tourism of the Camino. Uh, and now we're approaching uh, one of the Roman uh, bridges. And uh, after here, we're continuing to the next town about two kilometers out. What's this? It says, uh, Paradise in Construction. Interesting. Let's see what they got here. Olive. Garden. Hey! They have the restaurant here. Olive. Garden. Well, kind of an interesting place in the middle of the Camino. Just met people from the Dominican Republic. Uh, well, actually they're from Mallorca. And now they're, they live in the Dominican Republic. Uh, it's got like a kind of Zen vibe, uh, which is interesting. There, there's so many things you find in the Camino that are so different. Uh, but once again, you know, people from all, all over the world. Uh, so here we go, we continue. On the Camino de Santiago here with BDE Travels. Spain is very famous for its wines. We also cross some of the haystacks along the way. Bike riders, usually uh, you encounter them as you go through the Camino de Santiago. Well, folks, uh, after the uh, hill, we come over to one of the aqueducts. And uh, interesting that people started painting the trees yellow just to make sure that no one of the pilgrims will lose the, uh, the way. As we walk, we come across Puente del Rio Salado, which is found in the Codex Calistinos. Well, folks, we're just crossing the uh, Puente Salado. And uh, interesting, I just met a, a young 18-year-old boy who's doing the Camino de Santiago with his dad. He's from Italy. And, uh, you know, he didn't want to be interviewed, but uh, he's still back there with me and stuff. So we had a great time talking. It's amazing what Google Translator could do. We had a full conversation, even though I don't know a little bit of Italian, we had a full conversation on the road. So it's uh, one of the great things about the Camino. Keep enjoying with us, BD Travels. Well, we're going through one of the underpasses. It's interesting, it's made out of rock and there's no graffiti. It looks like it's clean, which is strange. Well, here it is. Uh, the town of Lorca, once again, another small town 
in the middle of the Camino de Santiago, find a couple of bars open and a water fountain with the typical uh, city hall in the middle, church, and uh, small houses. Whoa, let me see. I gotta figure out what time is it. Because we've been walking for a while. Right now it's 10.34. Hey, we're making some good time. I think we're gonna make it to Estela before uh, two o'clock. All right, now we're approaching the town of uh, Villa Tuerta. You can look it up, uh, all the information. Uh, but right now we are going to cross the underpass and let's see what we find, if they have any good pictures or messages back there. This one is Villa Tuerta. The next one is Atapuerca. Atapuerca is the one that has the archaeological findings. Villa Tuerta, it's uh, got nothing. <laughs> The city of Villa Tuerta is divided in two by a romantic bridge. The river that crosses through town is the Iransu River. In Villa Tuerta, we came across literally with a clown that dispensed water. The church in town is dedicated to Our Lady of Assumption. Once you make it to the church, you can get your stamp right inside. Leaving the town of Villa Tuerta, we make our way to one of the oldest hermitage in the Camino, La Ermita de San Miguel, or St. Michael's Hermitage. As we approach this humble church, we learn about its rich history. The church is located in the road between Villa Tuerta and Estella, right along El Camino de Santiago. This is one of the three Romanic churches in the area, off the Occidental Pyrenees. It dates from the 10th century, approximately the year 970. We made it to Estella, and this is the Church of the uh, Holy Sepulchre. Uh, looks a very Gothic kind of like, and uh, I don't know, it looks interesting. Uh, we made it to Estella. And uh, we should be uh, done for today. I want to do a small debrief of everything that happened. Uh, but that will be in a, in a few minutes from now. Oh, we just entered the town of Estela. It's kind of interesting. They have like a medieval uh, theme. Uh, they got different products on the outside. People are dressed from the medieval times, uh, such as that gentleman that's coming this way. So. Uh, Interesting. I've never been in a town that uh, maintains this kind of uh, uh, things. It looks very medieval and uh, they're dressed like medieval people. Uh, it's packed. It's Sunday, so I guess everyone is out in the street taking a look at this. Uh, not bad. I'm enjoying this so far. During the medieval celebration, pilgrims are transformed to the medieval times, experiencing the food, the culture, and the people of Spain. Well, folks, we're in the town of Estela, and they're celebrating the week of the medieval times. Uh, they got the king, they got the horses, they got the jowls. Uh, very interesting now in summer that uh, you can have fun. There's a lot of uh, places where you can eat, and also they do um, crafts and things to do. So it's, it's very interesting the way they, they do things in here. It was a very warm day and Annalise took the opportunity to taste the ice cream from Estella. We also encountered a gentleman who was making a thread of a silk cocoon. And from these medieval activities, we say goodbye to the town of Estella and thanking you for joining us on this trip from Camino de Santiago. Don't miss any of our next episodes as we share more experiences here on the Camino de Santiago with BDE Travels. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining us.